Hey everyone, it's Rochelle with Losing It on Keto, and in today's video, what I have for you is uh, is a presentation of some blood work that I had done uh, back on January 27th of this year, um, when at that time it was my uh, eighth week of protein sparing modified fast. I've only recently had those results reviewed, so I met with a naturopathic doctor yesterday, which was February 15th. And, uh, and so I wanted to share uh, some of the results of that because I think it, it's insightful. And, uh, and you may ask, why did I have blood work done? Well, I told you that I'm doing an ideal protein style version of the diet. And um, their protocol, well, first of all, the, the diet was designed as being medically su supervised. And so even though when I followed their program with their coach, with their products, there was no real um, medical supervision. They had a coach and, and the coaches were typically ones that had succeeded with some sort of weight loss on the program. There was no medical expertise. And I think they could say medically supervised because the, the program was done out of a, typically a chiropractor's office or some sort of um, provider along those lines. Um, so anyways, and I think I've shared with you before when I did that, I had a vitamin D level of 15. So I've learned the hard way to make sure that, that I'm properly monitoring. And hence, this is why I did the blood work and, um, why I did it at the time I did it. And I will continue to do it throughout the, this, uh, you know, these months that I'm doing protein sparing modified fast. So let's get to the results. So first one, um, thyroid stimulating hormone, the TSH. So the TSH, I've, I've had this tested quite a number of times and more times than not, it shows what's indicate, you know, what's described as subclinical hypothyroid. And they say subclinical because my free T3 and free T4 is good. So what this just means is my thyroid could be working a little bit harder to make sure that I have sufficient free T3 and free T4. What I find interesting is that when the doctor reviewed these results with me, he said this value could be self-induced um, due to the consumption of protein powders. Um, so he recommended that I consume more lean animal meat and retest this. And I've recently mentioned to you that I had been watching some videos in regards to precision protein sparing modified fast, and they don't use protein powders in there. And this is the reason why. So I told him that using the ideal protein version of this where it was throat the three protein supplements per day i.e protein powders and the logic there was that the protein powder is more bioavailable you know he he shared with me that that that's the reason why you know the protein powder companies make the powder because that's that's the um stated belief but uh, but he's not a fan of that. And so he said this could be um, a self-induced value um, based on uh, getting a portion of my protein from protein powders rather than whole foods or not processed foods. So, so I thought that was interesting. The other thing I thought was interesting was that he had said to test for the two antibodies, you know, that can show, say, if you have Hashimoto's. The interesting thing is I told them, well, I've had that tested before and they came back negative. And I mistakenly thought you either have them or you don't. And he indicated, no, um, you should have them tested because one time they may be negative, but another time they may be positive. So I learned now to um, test for the antibodies anytime I'm going to test my thyroid. So lesson learned for me. Okay, so the next one in relation to cholesterol. Now, I have been to a number of keto uh, health summits and 
there's a keto cardiologist by the name of Dr. Nadir Ali, and he presented at one of the conferences that I attended. And he showed data that showed um, mortality was improved with a cholesterol over 200, a total cholesterol over 200. And I have worked to get my cholesterol over 200, but I see now it's it's 172. So the I mentioned that to the doctor yesterday and and was surprised to hear his take on this, which is a, a better cholesterol is near 300 following this way of eating. So I thought that's interesting. I don't know how I'm going to get it near 300, but uh, all, core, all cause mortality um, is improved by having a cholesterol closer to 300 than 200. Um, once again, following this way of eating, what I mean is, you know, no seed oils and in, in, in following low carb, having sufficient protein, etc. So it's, it's important to understand the context of that cholesterol value. Um, the other thing is my HDL showing 40, and he linked this again to the protein powders and, uh, and believes that the HDL will come up by eating um, lean animal meats. So he suggested to incorporate that in and, and retest. So there's two test results that are, that are pointing towards uh, consuming more lean animal meat than, than protein powder. So I, uh, so I found that, found that interesting. And then the last result that I wanted to share with you is this homocysteine value that's showing it's higher than normal. And that can indicate a B, B vitamin deficiency. And what he told me is it, it could, but it doesn't necessarily uh, mean a B deficiency. So he noted that he would want to see this in conjunction with um, an omega-3 index and ratio test. So he said this could be indicative of an omega fatty acid issue. And I told him, well, I'm not consuming omega-6. I'm not consuming seed oils. And he said, yeah, that may be true as a result of the protein sparing modified fast um, way of eating. But that could also be you're not getting enough of the, of the omega-3s. So he suggested that I get this, this test that's both the omega index and ratio. And so this reflects the um, omega-3 status in one's body over the past four months. That's the index. And then the ratio uh, measures what the omega-6 to omega-3 is. So interestingly enough, I had ordered this test a while ago and I never followed through on that. So uh, so that is something I'm, I am actually going to per, pursue. So that leads me to kind of the summary. What you know? What are my what are my conclusions from this? So first of all, in the course of our conversation, I told him that I had had my R, my resting metabolic rate recently tested. And I said, you know, people like to say that when you're following a lower calorie calorie protocol like this, that you're going to damage your metabolism. And I told him I would, you know, challenge that because if you're consuming sufficient protein like this, that would not happen. And I was happy to hear that he was in agreement with that. So I shared with him my test results and, and shared that, you know, testing my RMR doing this demonstrated that I wasn't demonstrating my, my metabolism and he wasn't surprised by that. So I thought that was good to get that confirmation. Um, additionally, in regards to the results, overall, all the, all the results look good. And I forgot to mention that what was the basis for me getting these blood tests? Um, or I should say, how did I know what tests to, to get? So um, Dr. Ken Berry, who's a a YouTube influencer, a social media influencer in the keto world. In, like I said, he's a doctor. He recently came out with a book called Common Sense Labs. 
and these common sense labs are meant to indicate if you don't have any underlying health issues, so, so you're a healthy individual, what the labs are that you should have ordered um, at your annual exam. And then he gives some guidance how to how to convince your doctor to order them if they resist and, and whatnot. But I just went ahead, I went to Ulta Labs, ordered them myself, got the results back, but then I needed somebody to help interpret them when I had some out of normal uh, range findings. So so that's what led me to the path of, of uh, talking to this naturopathic doctor. But uh, But how I knew what test to order like I said, it was from Dr. Berry's recent book on uh, common sense labs. And in that book, he even includes what um, what's normal slash standard, but then what's optimal. So it's a it's a it's a good set of information, but you need to have something additional to that, which is someone to talk over the results of the labs. And so hence why I had the appointment this week to do that. Um, in regards to supplementation, so he's not a fan of, of supplementing. Um, he's a fan of getting all the vitamins and minerals, it, it, micronutrients from the diet. So he is, you know, recommending that you don't do protein sparing modified fast seven days a week. You know, you do it, say, anywhere from three to five days a week. And I'm certainly aware of that, but as I've mentioned on this channel before, I'm following the ideal protein uh, style protocol and that seven days a week. And he said, well, if you're gonna do that, you, you do need to supplement. And so then, you know, we had reviewed my, my supplement plan and I told him that all my supplements come from Whole Foods, that there is nothing synthetic. And he said he, he likes that. So that was encouraging to hear that he said, you know, that is certainly a good way to go about it versus um, supplementing with, with synthetics. And so then what are, what are my takeaways? So what are some potential changes? So I heard that I should consider adding more animal uh, meat, lean animal meat as, a pro, as opposed to the protein powders. Um, getting the uh, omega, the, the fatty acids te acid test, um, and potentially doing protein sparing modified fast, um, fewer number of days a week. So for now, I'm gonna keep doing the protein sparing modified fast seven days a week. I will be cognizant of adding uh, more lean animal meat as opposed to protein powders. And then, um, and then I will get the omega fatty acid test. So th that is, you know, my my game plan um, as a result of this blood work and the assessment, the the interpretation of the results of the blood work. And I will retest again. I'm not exactly sure when I will re retest again. I don't know if it's going to be, given this this was at eight weeks, if at 16 weeks, I'm gonna kind of go by how my body's feeling, but uh, but I do plan to test again. And I wanna know if I add the, the additional lean protein from animal meat, from animal source, if uh, the HDL it increases and whether the TSH um, reduces, and then I will test for the antibodies next time as well. So had these results, wanted to share that with you and, uh, and let you know what I'm going to do in response to them. So there you have it. It's all I have for you in this video. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and, uh, and look out for more videos coming your way. Uh, I've got a couple more recipe videos um, that, are, that are set to go. So watch out for those and I'll see you in, that vid in those videos. Okay, take care.